Have you ever looked at a Pokemon card and been like, what? That's... I'm just gonna leave the room now. With the TCG having been a thing for the last 20 years with thousands upon thousands of cards printed, there are bound to be the odd few here and there that will raise eyebrows. So today I'm going to be taking a look at what I believe are the top 10 weirdest Pokemon cards out there. Number 10. Cool Porygon. This was a card that actually inspired me to make this video. Cool Porygon was first released in Japan alongside a card appropriately named Hungry Snorlax to help promote the Nintendo 64 and was later stuffed into a CD full of songs from the anime. There isn't really anything out of the ordinary about this card's appearance or attacks, but it's still... cool. I don't know why it's cool. It just is. Like it might as well be Hip Porygon, Trendy Porygon, Radical Porygon. Number 9. Zoroark and Legendary Pokemon. This one is actually a Jumbo card. Jumbo cards are basically just bigger cards. For this reason, they aren't tournament legal. I mean, imagine trying to play with one of those. So, in theory, it means that Pokemon can make a card as whack as they want and it won't have any consequences on the game itself as long as it's a Jumbo card. And good thing too, because I wouldn't want to come up against something with an attack that does 1000 damage. Cards that have more than one Pokemon in them are always pretty cool, but this one is just... Ah! Wait a second. Call of Legends. Pokemon, you sneaky little sh- Number 8. Miss Drevis promo. While doing research for this video, I came across this one Reddit thread where people were discussing odd Pokemon cards, which would be how I found this Miss Drevis card. <laughs> Give me a second. Sorry, I just, I can't take this thing seriously. Obviously the artist is very talented, but that face. <laughs> so I put forth to you a challenge. Below is a link to a high quality rip of this art. I want you to take that picture and give it the best caption you can. Send the monstrosities you create over to my Twitter and maybe I'll feature the funniest ones in a later video. Do it. Number seven, Brock Sonix from Gym Heroes. That last card was pretty interesting. I wonder if this strat has any more points of interest. Blah, 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 blah. Perhaps Brock's Onyx, which at a quick glance appears to be trapped in a watermelon in anguish. What? <laughs> it actually does, and I can't unsee it. Like, what are those lines even meant to be? <laughs> the poor thing looks quite upset. I mean, I think you would be if you were trapped in a watermelon. Number six, ditto cards. If you were collecting Pokemon cards around the time of Generation 3, then no doubt you know what I'm talking about. Of course, Ditto is a Pokemon that can transform into any other Pokemon in existence with one catch. It can't change its face. Well, in the games it can, but that's probably because redoing the faces of over 800 Pokemon to match Ditto would just take too much time. But it was in Generation 3 with the set EX Delta Species that Pokemon dropped 10 Ditto cards into one set. Except all but one of them are Ditto pretending to be different Pokemon. They all look like me when I stop and think about the fact that I make Pokemon videos for a living. This Mr. Mine was actually released a little later in Pop Series 3, but it wasn't until nearly 10 years later that another one of these was released as a Black Star promo. This one takes a crown for being the weirdest since it actually shows Ditto mid-transformation. Honestly, I'm really surprised that they haven't featured this concept in the TCG much recently, considering how much they have marketed it with their general merchandise like plushies. Heck, I even have two of them and they're beautiful. Number 5. Pokemon Snap Cards. This set of promos is very well known by the community by now, so I won't talk about what they are for too long. In 1999, for reference, I was literally one at this time, a Koro Koro competition was held to see who could send in the best pictures from the spin-off game Pokemon Snap. The winning entries were made into real Pokemon cards with 20 copies printed and sent to the winners. These are ridiculously rare, so don't bank on ever getting one in your collection, but there are two in particular from this set that stand out. These two pictures are pure perfection. Moving on. Number four, Medusa Psyduck. Mazuba Psyduck is a card that exists. Of course, this card references Junichi Matuba, a director of Game Freak ever since Red and Green. This card was given out to customers in Japanese Pokemon centers who attended signings. Just look at his face of pure terror. 
please stop. This is embarrassing. Number three. Number two. Imakuni. All of the Imakuni cards. Imakuni has come back to life in the past year or so after being printed in Generations, and is though duo being made a secret rare in Evolutions. But just who is this man wearing a Mickey Mouse costume, and why the heck is he on my Pokemon card? Tomoaki Imakuni is a musician that did some work for the Pokemon anime. Fun fact, he was also a designer for the first two Pokemon Ranger games. But one way or another, Imakuni became somewhat of a running joke within the Pokemon TCG with a total of 13 cards under his belt. But which one is my favourite? Well, Shining Imakuni, of course. You know, like the other Shining cards in Generation 2 which featured the Shiny versions of Pokemon? So, what does a Shiny Imakuni look like? Get it? It's shining because some random person is shining a torch on him! <laughs> and in my opinion, the weirdest Pokemon card ever made would be... Mega Sachko EX. Uh, what else do I even say? I got nothing. What a gem. I really don't know what to say about this one. It kind of speaks for itself. Sachiko Kobayashi is a singer and a former member of the Pokemon rap group Suzuki-san. You know who else was a member of this group? That's right, your boy Makuni! Of course! This card is borderline unsettling. I love how they randomly put the Kanto starters on the border when they have no reason to be there. It's almost like they're there to serve as a reminder. This is actually a Pokemon card, guys. Repeat, this is a Pokemon card. Obviously this card was made as a joke, but I find it hilarious that it's completely unplayable because it's a Mega and there isn't even a regular Sachiko EX, so you can't play it. But this is without a doubt the weirdest and possibly creepiest Pokemon card I have ever seen. But that's it for the top 10 weirdest Pokemon cards. If you think I missed any weird cards, which I probably did, then let me know in the comments or on Twitter or something. I just want to say a quick thank you for the overwhelmingly positive response to last week's silly video about my London adventures. It was a lot of fun to make, so I'm glad you enjoyed it too. If you have any top 10 lists or other video ideas that you want to see me make, then I am always open for suggestions, so yeah. Suggest. But as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.